It's fun. It's fast. It's factual. And it's Friday. It's time for the long-awaited BHAs. But since a lot of the BHAs are not really BHAs, I'm going to talk about the number one most talked about BHA, which is not a BHA. It's actually an AHA. It's kind of both. Um, salicylic acid. Salicylic acid falls into two categories. It falls into salts and esters. Should you care? Meh. The important thing to take away is that you're going to see it in different forms because it's derived from different sources. Um, just like citric acid came in magnesium citrate or sodium citrate, you're going to see salicylic acid in different forms. Here are some examples. Methyl salicylate comes from the wintergreen plant or wintergreen oil. Acetyl salicylic acid is aspirin. Aspirin that you can buy at the drugstore. Yeah, that's the kind I'm talking about. So why is salicylic acid not really a BHA? Well, it comes down to its chemical structure. I guess it has certain things here and certain things there where it should be there or this or that. And, and really, truthfully, to explain it, we need somebody above my pay grade. But here's the chemical structure. Okay, let's talk about what I can explain, and that is that salicylic acid is all around us. Just take a quick look at all the things that you can find it in. It has been used in skincare for 2,000 plus years, going all the way back to the first century AD. So the interesting thing about salicylic acid, if this is one of the only things that you take away, is that it's a lipid soluble. That is the main difference between AHAs and BHAs. AHAs cannot um, bust into oily stuff, but BHAs can. You're kind of like, wait, what was lipids? Lipids are building blocks of fats and cholesterols and basically they make up that lipid rich secretion or goo that holds our keratinocytes, our tough fibrous protein cells together on our face. To get more specific, salicylic acid is called a desmolytic, not a keratinolytic. You remember our keratinocytes are our tough fibrous proteins that are like the cells of our skin. And the glue that holds them together, um, that's what salicylic acid breaks up. Not the cells, but the glue. Got it? Mm, I think we need the Legos. Here we are looking at our cells. As you can see, here is our cell junction. Here is our cell goo that holds our keratinocytes together. Okay? Salicylic acid, when applied on top, comes in, breaks up these bonds between the cells, causing exfoliation. So long, skin cells! Okay, so what does it do for your skin? Why do you want to use it? First of all, it's an anti-inflammatory. Number two, it's an exfoliant. Because it is so good at breaking up those cell junctions because it's a lipid soluble agent, it does a really great job at exfoliating your skin. It also has the side effect or the byproduct of decreasing sebum production. It's also antimicrobial and it's also antiseptic. Who should use it? People with acne, people with hyperpigmentation, aging skin, people with wrinkles. Another difference that I wasn't able to draw a line from, so this is just purely opinion based right here, is that I did not see with salicylic acid the um, some of the, the other benefits that you see with AHAs. So with AHAs, remember, they restructure the skin underneath. They cause it to be more organized. They cause it to be plumper and thicker. I did not find studies saying that salicylic acid does the same things. Again, it's that potent exfoliator, but I didn't see that it was, it was causing the plumping and the thickening of skin underneath like AHAs did. 
That's not to say that it doesn't, I just couldn't find the studies that backed that up. So I can't really say that that's a fact. However, what we've seen with most things that exfoliate the skin, the top layer of skin, that stratum corneum, that those bottom layers do become thicker by decreasing the top layer. So where are you gonna find salicylic acid? You could pretty much find it in anything. You can find it in skincare. You can find it in um, makeup. You can find it in body products. You can find it in hair products. Absorption. It is so effective at penetrating that lipid barrier that we have, that lipid glue that holds our skin scales together. It's so good at getting through that, that it can be absorbed into your Technically your body, when it absorbs salicylic acid, views it like you've taken too much aspirin. And in too large of quantities, it can actually be toxic. Now, if you're using a product like this with 3%, twice a day, um, this is my husband's face wash from Garden of Wisdom. It's got 3% salicylic acid. He uses it twice a day, about a pea-sized amount. No, you're not going to, it is very unlikely that you would develop salicylic acid toxicity from this type of product. I'm not gonna say that you could not, because that would just be a dangerous claim to make on the internet. <laughs> salicylic acid has risks, just so you're aware. The risks are very low with an over-the-counter product, um, using one product in your routine. It's something to be aware of, and the nurse in me would not be comfortable making this video unless I stressed that you know, even though this is a plant, even though it is derived from nature, it does have powers and properties and it can be toxic in certain quantities. What would I say the take home is here about the toxicity? Don't go crazy with over the counter products. And if you're gonna do salicylic acid peels, definitely seek out an esthetician or a dermatologist to do them. That's just the nurse in me being extremely cautious and wanting you to be cautious as well. <laughs> Okay guys, so we've covered AHAs and now we've covered the most popular BHA. This is all I'm gonna say about BHAs because I think you can apply this information to other BHAs and there's not that many of them. Mostly what you're gonna see is salicylic acid or it in its forms like wintergreen or willow bark. We've covered enzyme exfoliation. What's next? Well, Lord only knows but I know I'll think of something. If you have any suggestions or anything that you wanna hear about, leave it in the comments below and I'll see you next week.